record this, um, couldn't be here, so he's, he's like my guy. So, anyways, my name is Mr. Hockaday. Um, this is kind of an interesting meeting. I, I don't know if Waller does this or anything else. I think I'm just an aggressive teacher, but your child is being recruited for a class. Um, I have easily enough students in the class already. I have 59 students enrolled for next year. Actually, a couple have already changed their schedules, so it's not an issue if I need the students. But what I have learned is if I put the really, I mean, this is a college level class. If I put the kids who are superstars in a room together, um, they can kind of teach themselves sometimes. Um, yes, I do my job, but uh, I find it works really well that I coach them instead of telling them what to do. So anyways, I'm gonna give you a quick uh, breakdown of what the class is. I'm gonna do this kind of as quickly. And then I'm gonna introduce the people that I brought here. And then I'm literally I'm just gonna open it up for you to ask questions to them. Because I really believe that's the issue. Um, there's questions about all sorts of things, so I was going to answer the questions uh, as much as I can with a little short presentation, and then kind of introduce them and why I invited these specific people. And uh, they bring a lot of different aspects to this, uh, so that they would be great people to answer questions you would have. So, as a parent, you should have questions. I have an eighth grader that's coming over here next year, and I have questions. <laughs> And so I think about things that matter to me. So anyways, so I really believe this is actually a presentation uh, students, you will see this next year in class. This is my first day of school, excuse me, my second day of school. But I really believe, and don't take this wrong, that <laughs> she, she teaches chemistry. But um, howdy, you want to put your name down there? All right, that's okay. Um, you're now a member of the most useful class you will ever take. And by that means, by that, I'm not saying this better than chemistry, but what I'm saying is chemistry teacher. But I will say that Chemistry fits into geography because this is part of the world that we live in, so geography is describing the world you live in. And human geography gets into all the cultural aspects and the, the urban aspects and agriculture. It gets into all these things that really tie into everything else we learn. So um, anyways, I really believe this is a big deal. Um, some things we're going to learn this year. Geography is everything and everything is geography. It's kind of what I said a minute ago. Um, it, everything is geography. Uh, I saw a cute little cartoon. Y'all may have seen this. Not too, I'm not a cartoon. Someone put it on the wall. Uh, or like not a wall, but you know those things when they put the little, I don't know what you call marquee, when they put the little letters out there, you know, put the signs. And it said something like, um, geography, or I'm sorry, geology rocks, but geography is where it's at. <laughs> it, but it's more than just places, actually. So one of the things I'm going to teach your child that I'm so excited about, and they'll recognize this right away, is I'm going to teach them to see things that are right in front of them that they haven't seen before. For instance, there's a FedEx truck there. Who's actually seen and noticed the arrow before? If you look at between the E and the X on FedEx, it's an arrow. I've never seen it until one of these geography teachers showed me this a few years ago as like an example. And so now a problem is I can't see a FedEx truck without going, oh look, the arrow. <laughs> The, do we all see it now? The, the arrow. So it's fascinating. Of course, it's kind of cool because it says what FedEx does, right? They move things from one place to another. But the idea as a geography teacher is I want to show your kids things that are right in front of them that they just haven't seen and see it for what it really is. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, what does this say about this place? This just talks about uh, water issues. Uh, water is a huge issue. Uh, there's clean, available water, um, not just in developing countries, but also in advanced countries. So we're going to talk about things like that, uh, environmental issues that affect all of us. Um, this is kind of a funny one to talk about. I will tell you, we're going to talk about some high level, I would even argue adult topics in this class. Um, so uh, when we talk about dry counties and liquor, I'm not promoting drinking. But the idea is we discuss why are the dry counties where they are? And they tend to be near the Bible Belt, influenced by the Southern Baptist uh, uh, pre uh, prevalence in that part of the country. And so there's patterns that we look for. Things, things don't just show up anywhere, so I want to show them that. thing. It's kind of cool to see these kind of patterns. Um, we're going to look at all sorts of things about the world, uh, how, how much poverty there's, or I'm sorry, if you look at one country, uh, or I'm sorry, look at the entire world, how many people are impoverished, how many people aren't impoverished, how many people are male, how many people are female, how many people have access to cell phones, how many people don't have access to cell phones. So this is all these really kind of cool things. If you looked at the world as 100 people or 100%, what percentage has all these different things? So it's kind of a cool thing we'll talk about. Um, we will definitely bring up the idea of why is this place in the news every day. Um, it's fascinating to know that when freshmen come in, it's as important as this place is in the world. Half of them do not understand Israel and Palestine. We will definitely not just talk about that, but we'll talk about border disputes in general and why border disputes occur. And what different kinds of border disputes there are, right? Functional, or not functional, um, operational and uh, definitional and all these things, so it's really kind of cool. Um, 
And here's the question that I know everyone's going to ask, because this is the concern I have. When I talk to, or uh, this is the concern I've noticed, when someone says, I didn't sign up for this class, immediately the question is, well, I'm afraid this is going to hurt my child's GPA. And so I went and collected data over the last couple days. There are, I, I teach almost all the pre-AP students. There's one section that's taught by Mr. Zhu in the room right next to me. And so I got her data and my data, and the percentage of students who have A's, and the percentage of students who have B's and C's and D's, etc. And my, my point is if you're concerned about this class hurting your GPA, there are more A's per, by percentage in this class than there are in the pre-AP class. There are no D's and F's on the whole year. I mean, is it, does someone occasionally get a D in a, in a given six weeks? Yeah, but um, I'm going to say something and I'm going to ask them to defend this in a minute. Um, I protect your grade. Yeah. So my point is I'm not going to let this kill you. Now, I'm also going to not give it away either. If you get a 20 on a quiz, and you probably will get 20s and 30s on quizzes, it stays. But there's ways I can, things I can do to help you. Okay. So the idea is I protect your grade, and that's evidence of it. This is, we just collected this data yesterday. So um, I think this is kind of important to note that there's more A's in AP than they're in pre-AP. People think they want to take pre-AP. And the reality is you could, if you're a brilliant student, you could probably go to pre-AP and cruise. You could be, it could be very easy for you. This class is definitely more challenging than pre-AP, but it's challenging in a good way. I have something up on my wall there that they, I want the kids to see every day. It says, trust your struggle right by my door. Um, when you struggle and things are difficult, that's when you become great. When you do things that are easy to get good grades, congratulations, but this isn't show and tell. Kindergarten ended a long time ago. Um, and so uh, I, I quote, the, I tell this to them, my kids probably, you remember quote my dad before. My dad used to say, um, if, uh, if you want to soar with the eagles, you, you can't hang around on the ground with the turkeys. You got to risk and you got to try to do super things and it's going to be difficult, but the opportunity is there. And the great thing about this class, what we try to do is by putting freshmen in this super high level class right away, is we set the standard for them for our extraordinary students to actually leave this building being extraordinary. And not that we really didn't do that before, but we didn't do it to this level. We pushed it to another level with this class. And uh, I wish there was a student who couldn't make it here. Um, uh, he, I really wanted him here because he told me something the other day in the hallway which really made my day, which is that he told me that he is doing well in physics because of what I made him do as a freshman. I made him have to study. I made him accountable and now he's doing well in everything. And he actually, and I said, hey, I need you to come to a meeting for me. <laughs> but he couldn't get out of work, unfortunately. So. Anyways, so that's kind of that. Um, just a head, and this is not complete, by the way, but there's a misunderstanding about GPA in our district. is kind of fascinating anyway, so I just want to throw this out there just so you know that. There's this thing that a lot of us who are older grew up with, that an A is a four point and a B is a three point. And Waller High School doesn't do that. It goes down from, on pre-AP, it goes down 0.5 per point. So if you get, it's actually on a four point scale, but you get a weighted average or you get a weighted uh, GPA. So if you get an, a 100 in a pre-AP class or an AP class or dual credit, any of them, you get a five. But if you get 99, you go 0.5 points or 0 0.05 points lower than that. So you get a three point or 4.95, 4.9. So the illusion of like A's and B's is a thing anyways that doesn't really matter. The overall average is much higher in AP, and so therefore my kids are going to have better GPAs than the kids who don't take the class. It's just a mathematical certainty. So, now, is it difficult? Yes. Yes. Is it worth it? Yes. Definitely. Okay, good. I forgot about you over there. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, we have a, a variety of the, these kids represent a variety of different kids. I'll talk about the kids in a second. Um, I think she might be anyway. So good. So let me talk about. I'm actually I'm going to kind of like try to step away now. I talk for a minute, um, and if you have questions to me, I'll be more than happy to ask or answer that is. But I'm going to tell you kind of who I have here. Um, so I'm going to kind of start over there. I got Ariana Seeloff. She is a junior. I told I called her a senior earlier, and Ariana got a five on the test. If you do not know anything about the AP test, a one is the lowest score you can get. A two is almost good enough to get college credit. A three will get you college credit in most universities. A four is like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. You did great. And a five is like, you're like an honor student if you were, as if you are a sophomore in college because this class is offered, offered to sophomores in college. So you were like be at honors level. And so she got that as a freshman. She got a five. So she's an extraordinary student. One of the reasons I brought her in here, looking at Grace for a second, but I look at other people. She is heavily involved in band, always has been. 
And so, you know, I hear people talk about, oh, I'm an athlete, I'm in band, I'm in this, I'm an FFA. Um, it requires time management, yes, but nonetheless, uh, she was able to do it. So we, you can ask her questions about how she was able to do that with the busy schedule. She's great. Um, Miss Bayless told me something at a, we were actually at a uh, Odyssey of the Mind contest. My daughter's in Odyssey of the Mind. And uh, so she, she was there and uh, is it, uh, you're not supposed to talk about students, but is it okay if I talk about Seth and his score? Um, so she has, uh, yes, no? okay. <laughs> so she has two wonderful sons that I've taught. If there's more, I haven't met them yet. Well, there's one more coming, or there's a daughter. Yeah, but not for a while. Yeah, yeah, for a while. So anyways, so I taught her son, who's an outstanding student, um, actually didn't get the five on the test, um, almost got the college credit. Now there's some challenges, he, he, there's, you have to answer a lot of questions. And he tried to answer 75 questions in 60 minutes and didn't answer all of them. And so that kind of, that, that every student, we had students this year complain about that too. It's always a challenge to get those questions done. And after that, I've kind of worked on pacing too, to get them better, you know, to work on that. Um, so she's not here as like, my child got the perfect score and, and isn't he amazing? She's here to say, hey, Regardless of the score, the class still was valuable. That's kind of what I heard you tell me the other day. So, so that's kind of what I felt. And so then, of course, I have her youngest son as well. So I have Owen, or not youngest, so the next son. Is it? He's the son, the youngest son. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, but the next one down, Owen. And so I had him this year, and so uh, he could kind of tell you about what it was like to go through the class this year, and maybe even to have the the pressure of my older brother took the class, you know, kind of thing, because that's some issues. And, you know, we got older brothers and sisters here, right? Um, so Miss Green is actually an interesting one because she has three kids that are twins, that are twins, triplets, <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> the three, three that all came at the same time. <laughs> so, but the fascinating thing with her though is that the three kids are actually very different academically and socially, everything. They really are very different kids. And so she can almost tell you, if you say like, well, I got this issue, well, she can probably, oh, well, one kid could relate to that. Well, I got this other issue, well, a different kid. So she can give you a lot of different aspects of what it's like to be a parent in different situations because they're very different kids. And I have one of her children here, Kaylin. Um, spells with a C. If you don't, if you don't spell it right, she gets mad. Um, just saying. Anyways, so uh, she is uh, definitely, actually both of them are candidates to get fives this year. I don't know where they're going to fall out, but they definitely were on my list of kids who could get a five. Um, the objective is to get the three, because that gets you the college credit. But then the five, you get to kind of pound your chest a little bit, talk about how amazing you are. Come on in, have a seat. Um, so anyways, I got Caitlin here as a current student you could talk to. And then uh, I got the probably the one I was most interested in, had, not that I'm not interested in y'all, but that there's just an interesting story that related to y'all. And that is that if you didn't sign up for AP Human Geography right away, there may have been some reluctance. As a parent, maybe you're concerned about having my child do this. And so Ms. Hyatt is a teacher here and then probably worked uh, to her, I don't know, advantage or disadvantage, you decide. Um, I told her that her son should take the class. And she said, nah, I don't think I want to take that as a level of class. So then I asked us again, and then I asked again. And I think I'll probably qualify as a stalker because I ran her down about once or twice a week. And eventually, so I, I, I must be... I must be a good salesman, or at least a repetition makes me a good salesman. So I can I convince her, and I think overall you think it was a good choice. So the idea of being reluctant as a parent to have your kid in this situation, I think she could probably speak to that because I think that's how you felt originally. Yeah, and so I think that's a good. So I kind of feel like I got a variety of people to talk to here that can answer various questions you have. So on that note, um, whatever questions you have, you can raise your hand. I will answer them, or they will answer them, or whoever you want to address them to. But I'm going to kind of step away because I believe the value is in y'all getting to talk to fellow students and fellow parents. Okay? So, anybody got any questions? Someone's got to start. Once per one person starts it off, it usually gets moved. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll start because I also teach AP. I teach AP's chemistry and, and my students are juniors and seniors. And an AP class is college, it's a college level class. And so when he approached me and said, Austin needs to Austin needs to take this class. I'm like, he's in eighth grade right now. He's going to be a freshman. That's too much. It's too much for a 14-year-old kid, 13, 14-year-old kid to come in, you know, because if, if it's taught right, it's a hard class. If it's taught to the rigor that it's supposed to, to the college rigor, and I, and I knew he would, I'm like, that's that's too much on my kid. You know, if he's just entering high school, it's going to be overwhelming. I don't want to do that to my kid. And, um, he kept talking to me about it, and, and what what got my attention with him, he's, Austin has always made straight A's, never been, you know, school's been easy for him. Breezing through school, never really been challenged. Um, and, and he said, he's gonna, you know, he needs to be challenged, and this class will challenge him and teach him how to study and teach him time management. And that's what got my attention, because I know he's right. 
because a lot of students breeze right all the way through high school. They hit college, they hit a wall, they don't know how to study, they've never hit that wall before. And, and that's what causes problems in college. So I, I'm very glad we made that choice. Austin is, he's done very well in the class. He's had times and I can see it, he starts to slip and that's when he starts to struggle and then he knows he's gotta just kick it up again and, and keep up with it. And um, yeah, he's had a pretty strong A all year and we're hoping for a good, a good score. So do not regret that decision at all. And I recommend it for sure. Struggle's a good thing. Mm -hmm. If you struggle, that's that, that's when you grow, right? Um, anybody familiar with Michael Jordan? The old people should raise their hands. <laughs> should I call you old people? The non-children should raise their hands. So if you're if you're familiar with Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan said something to the kid. I've quoted this to the kids before too. He said that in his career, he's missed like thousands of shots. He's lost hundreds of games. My favorite thing he says is that 26 times his team trusted him in the last minute of the game to take the final shot, and he missed. And he says, I failed over and over again. And that's why I'm successful. Mm -hmm. We don't succeed unless we struggle. And so I, I promise you, if your child signs up for this, that there will be moments that they probably are going to hate me. Maybe they're not hate me, but <laughs> curse my name. And you might curse my name too, but I promise you we're also going to get to an awesome destination. I'll, I'll kind of add to that. Um, there is one time that project I did curse your name. A I did too. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 very loud. Absolutely. Very loud. It's AGB not a is where it's at. It's field work. Mm, okay. Oh my god. Good times. Good times happen that. that project. So my kids are absolutely opposite. And yeah. once yes. <laughs> you have those experiences where night and day. And something I love about this class is he doesn't teach for the grade. And when we are have high achieving or even low achieving kids, it's it tends to be about the grade. Um, and everybody's worried about that number or the tra or you know GPA or my transcript or whatever. I love that he doesn't focus on the grade. And that sounds like how in the world is that possible? But even though AP generally, the whole purpose behind it is to get advanced placement, to get that score on your exam, right? You pay extra for the exam. That's that's the goal. All the work is for this exam. I have a kid who didn't make that score, and to have my kid who sacrificed and worked and tried and didn't get that prize, still say, best class he ever took. Absolutely worth it. That says a whole lot to me about the content of the class. And as both of them, so he, since he took it this year too, and he's finding his own discovery and you know enjoying it in a different way, to have my teenage sons have discussions about rural diversity and use vocabulary that I haven't been introduced to and having them discuss with me about water rights and border disputes and and what? Corn. Corn! Corn. <laughs> now I, I, I could educate you some on that too and it was a wonderful thing to be able to talk with my kids on another level. To have them get so excited about the world that they live in. That is not typical of teenagers um, in our world today that they weren't on their phones, they were discussing, they were really diving in. That's of great value to me. And so even though it is about the score, I love that it wasn't about the score, it was really about the content and how they can now progress in their world and how they see things differently, how they see these racial diversities happening every day around them. I love that about this class. And he teaches with such a great passion that the kids can't help but you know, kind of get that as well. It's it's contagious, um, and so that's my testimonial. Is it's not so, you don't have to worry so much about the grade as long as they are invested, and um, that's what counts. I I understand why I was asked to speak because chances are your student. I have one of those. I have the highly motivated themselves up if they do not have an A in every class and will do anything to bring it up. I have one that everything comes natural to, memory like a steel trap. And I have another one that her teacher in eighth grade recommended she not take this class, did not think she had the motivation, did not believe in her or anything. So I, I have every situation there and I was thinking, you know, when I was their age, 35 years ago, um, 
the only thing I really knew about nice. other cultures was evidently there are 50 million starving children in China and I should eat my dinner. <laughs> That's the only thing I really knew. I mean, we studied geography, but we didn't study anything about the people there. Or, you know, I knew nothing about their culture or anything. And so I laughed about that. But I'm going to expand on what she said about the feedback that you get. When I first started coming to the meetings, you know, I was like, the students are like, oh, we love Mr. Hockaday, Mr. Hockaday, so great. Oh, we love Mr. Hockaday. And my children started doing that. I'm like, okay. And it wasn't too long when I received my first phone call from him about 5.30, 6 o'clock on a Saturday. Wanted to discuss something with me. I'm like, I was going to say, okay. I, called, I, I called them on Sunday. So. And then, you know, I started seeing this. Well, I'm going to be, I'm going to be there late. We're going to stay after. And then it came time for the test. And it's every day for two weeks. We're staying after. We're staying after one day, four hours. We're coming up here on a Saturday. And I'm like, okay, I hope this... I don't know if this gentleman knows what off the clock means, but I don't know that I've ever seen a teacher that really not only says, oh, I care about all your children. He walks the walk, he talks the talk. Um, the amount of time, the amount of effort, the conversations that he will pull them aside. Um, because my that was my, my main concern when I first started this was, you know, you're not going to let her fail, are you? You know, can we... Can we move her out if she's failing? Because I did have those grades. He's like, not going to let her fail. And he'll pull them out in the hallway. He'll, you know, call you on a Saturday or Sunday. And he's there. I, I Above and beyond is definitely, you know, should be right behind his last name instead of, you know, DR or anything like that. Above and beyond. I have been, <laughs> I have been impressed. So now I see that the, you know, when... When the students say, oh, we love Mr. Hockaday. I think love is really actually, they're gonna realize, and maybe you've realized it as a junior, it's respect. They respect this teacher. And as a parent, I respect him for everything that he's done. I appreciate that, thank you. Um, of course, you know, Oh, yeah, not just about me. I'll tell you, I'm just getting interrupted or throwing something on top of what you're saying. Um, the reason why that I have that level of success and why I'm able, if you, if you want to say I'm making extra commitment, the reason why is because I got the kids who want to commit. Does that make sense? And so, you know, if you're, not, not that I don't enjoy teaching other classes, I've taught U.S. history, I've taught diverse classes in here. But when you have the right kids that are really, wanting to be aggressive learners, they want to go out and find things, then I'm not sure I'm really doing anything that extraordinary other than I'm actually being driven by them. Um, and to some degree, uh, occasionally, I may be doing something because I'm afraid I'm not doing enough for them or something, you know, I mean, it's because I know what they're doing and so I just try to do, you know, whatever. I don't, I, last thing you want to do is have a student call you out for not doing enough, you know, so. <laughs> Um, so you, so that may be what that is, but um, the success really is in the fact that if I have Owen and Caitlin in a class together, um, and this goes to kind of part of the grade protection I was talking about earlier, um, we have quizzes where they're going to get 20s, 30s, 40s on quizzes, but then I will give them a topic to discuss over agricultural geography, and I can put them together and they talk about it. Like corn, <laughs> like I mean, it sounds kind of funny, but they we broke down some details with corn one time, and what, what the whole is what the deal with the corn industry, and how it affects diet. I mean, everything we pushed it into so many different ways you can imagine, and the point is, they talked about it, and so if and I'm going to say this in a really interesting way, and this may come across wrong, and if it does, I apologize, but. If your child is as great as I've heard they are from Mr. Smith, from uh, whoever it may be, I guess uh, Coach Bird, you have Coach Bird and Salonese, I'm not sure who you have. Um, but if they're as awesome as they say they are, my class will be less if they're not in it. That's why I'm calling you here. I'm actually asking you to make my class a great class. <clears throat> I'm not saying, you know, I got this thing I want to make you do just because I'm, you know, I just want you to do it. Honestly, I kind of want to be successful. And I'm worried that if you're not there, 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 
that we're not going to be as successful as it could be. Because whatever great idea you have in your head, you know, let, let's just look at Grace because Grace, uh, Stephanie's right. So if uh, so, if Grace has some kind of unique idea about a topic, and she's in the pre-AP class, Stephanie will never hear it. And then that may not cue Stephanie to think about something, which then could have cued Savannah yes. to think about something. Which could have cued Umberto to say something. And all of a sudden it snowballs into this big thing. And I walk around and I listen to their discussions and they get a 100 for the discussion. It, it rarely, actually I've never done it. But I would tell them, you know, if y'all are goofing around and you're not on task, then I won't give you a 100. But it's never an issue. Because we've really kind of aggressively tried to get the right kids who are going to be successful in this environment in the environment. So it's it's them. Whatever you're saying, I mean, it sounds. I appreciate the compliment. It sounds nice, but honestly, it's your students and putting that or your child, your children, putting them in that environment. I um, mean, uh, you know, of course, I look. I'm gonna look over this high for a second. I, I off and on encountered her children. I never taught Travis, right? I did teach Emily, um, and I saw Austin in the hallways, and I and I was after her like a stalker because I saw that kid and I knew what he had, and I'm like, I want him in the class. <laughs> I really want him there. Because he, as an individual, changed the class he was in. I can promise you he did. And so I, I, I suspect the same about your kids as well. Because what I've learned is the junior high school teachers now know, after like, this is my fourth year teaching the class, and they know after I've talked to them about who's been successful and who hasn't, and they trigger me with kids. And they will say, this kid's a good fit for this class, and you need to get this kid. And if I'm able to get them in there, they, they're a high-performing kid. Um, I had a student, she's not here today, but she went over to the schools to talk to you all the other day. And she was, uh, I'm not taking this class, I cannot do it, it's impossible. And she took it and uh, she has a legitimate shot to get a five on the test. One of the most extraordinary students and all I can think about is if I hadn't talked to her. Or if actually, better way to say it, if she hadn't come recommended by Coach Bird or whoever, well, I think she went to Wall Junior High School. So if she hadn't come recommended, then you know, then we would have missed that. And so really what it comes down to why you're here is I don't want to miss kids. So I'm being maybe I'm being a little selfish, but I don't want to miss kids. Because my class will be less if I don't have your kid in it, from what I hear from what the junior high kid teachers tell me, and they haven't been wrong. So that I'm sorry, I digress. I'll be quiet now. So um, somewhere, up, Janet, are you out there? Are you gonna come in? Are you still? I don't interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> so Janet was actually in the class the very first year I taught it. And so half the things I talk about that are really really cool, I either learned with her group or I didn't do with her group, and so I've learned since then. But she also got a five on the test as a freshman, and that was the first year. So honestly, she got it because of her, because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so really extraordinary student. Um, she's here for a couple reasons. I think I may have had uh, Espanol uh, you know, speak Spanish help. So someone, someone here wanted someone to speak Spanish so she can help me translate. So in the event I'm saying, if I'm talking too fast, you can ask questions to her. Um, one, she can answer as a student, and two, she can translate anything you want to say. Um, but uh, she also, uh, oh, actually I'll tell you one other cool thing. And this is something you alluded to. We tried something new this year. And when I tell you as a parent, first you're gonna go grumble, grumble, grumble but I think it was a home run. And that is that the weekend before the test, or two weekends, like a week and a half before the test, I guess, we had an FRQ boot camp on Saturday. And we came up here and we had students, there's something called FRQ, which is basically, I'll, I'll, parents, I'll put it in terms you understand, short answer questions. <laughs> so it was a short answer question, but how to answer short answer questions properly. And so we pulled old examples from old tests, but where this gets really cool, is I had old students, former students, who the only payment was pizza <laughs> come up the day of prom and come up and volunteer to tutor other students. You couldn't come because you were a band, right? But she was, she was all over wanting to do it and I told her the date. She's like, ah. Oh. So I had 13 students and honestly, I think that says something else. And although I think you're alluding to it earlier, you're making it sound like it's really me, it's like the system of the program we've created. And so I have students who care about what we're trying to do at Waller High School. And as a result, they're willing to give up their time as seniors, juniors on prom day, four hours of their time,
to help students. So we will be doing that again. So good news, bad news, you decide, but I will be inviting your kid to come in on it. Saturday, but I promise you I will have a, a list of volunteers who will come help you. And so, because the idea is I had 30 kids show up and I can't review 30 short answer questions uh, for four hours from 30 kids. So I actually walked around and supervised and listened to her and other students give kids feedback. And of course, if they had questions, they came to me and I would, you know, address it. But um, I'm asking you to be part of a program that's successful. The other thing is that, and I'll say this, of course, I've said it before, it is not easy. But there's the other argument, if it was easy, anyone would do it. Um, so if you, if, you, if you think you're extraordinary and you want to be extraordinary, you need to stop being ordinary. And so I'm giving you an opportunity to do that, but I promise you, it's not easy. But that's the good thing, believe it or not. Okay, so anyway, I talk to him. So um, the, the Janet, senior, so have a seat so I can ask you questions if you want to. <laughs> and it is the English pre-AP and the some geography pre-AP or AP, geometry pre-AP, bi biology pre-AP, along with, now we're looking at switching maybe from j Rotzi over to ag, but still another high time consuming extracurricular and I know that there's time, like in Banff, they stay after school from here to here. There's this little time gap that if we're not playing on the phone and just talking to everybody and playing patty cake the whole time, there's time to actually get some work done. Is there enough time with all that to get all pre-AP? And Because again, it's a freshman thing. And I know this and that, but I don't know all of them combined. That was his I've, schedule. I like it's almost the exact same schedule, but like I was able to like fit all of the time in order to do everything. And what's cool about like with like the after school tutorials is like it doesn't happen to like a few weeks before the test. So during the fall while you have marching band, like th like you could do the after school rehearsals. Right. And then once marching season's over, you like th we start doing the after school tutorials for AP Human, and then you can start like instead There's of like no conflict. there there is no conflict. Whatsoever, and even in the fall, though, I'm gonna have them very busy working with those. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You do read like a chapter, <laughs> ba basically like a chapter every night. More or less. More or less. You sit down for. You do not read a chapter every night. You read well, a quarter of a chapter okay, every two nights. Okay, but basically the amount of pages. It's <laughs> about like twelve well, pages. A key so issue. So like it's basically like a twelve, and I've read eighteen to twenty. Yeah. Say again. Some key I said I've heard 12 and I've heard 18 to 20. 12 or 18 to 20, what? Pages per Pages. night. Oh, it depends on, it depends on what the sections It just matters. Are. Sometimes Some the, there's eight and then sometimes there's like 14. It just matters and you need to look ahead like and plan ahead. Plan like sometimes you have to sit down for 30 minutes and read it, but sometimes you have to sit down for an hour and read it. Yeah. You just have to look and you can manage your time. And it, it is very doable. Um, all three of mine are in pre-AP classes. Uh, she is... She was on the junior junior varsity drill team. She's now on the drill team. Uh, she does theater. Am I forgetting anything? Um, she did UIL prose yeah. poetry. Uh, my son, he is a Boy Scout. He did UIL, uh, CIA club, AP classes. My other daughter was a, a junior varsity cheerleader this year. Um, all AP pre AP classes. It's doable. Uh, you will cuss him if he does that same project again this year. You, you know, just cuss him. Um, I think it's really cool. And how about, oh, actually, I have a surprise. I've got ruined my surprise. Oh my God. I have a surprise for you on the project. I almost ruined it. Never mind. But, um, it, 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 is, it, is, it is doable. As long as you have the motivation and it's like, I need to sit down for these, like, there is no procrastinating about it. It's like, I need to do this time allotted, sit down, do it, done. Like you have to have sit down and that. And that's something, like I said, a strong student has not been challenged to do yet. And but with this class, they have to. It's it's to keep up is so much. I'm not concerned about one job. class. It's four it's plus awesome. them together. Yeah. Okay. okay. And but that goes yeah, with the time okay. management. That goes. Yeah. So you were like talking about other classes, and I had like that exact same yeah, schedule. Yeah, I'm sure everybody. Can. And 
Um, I know it definitely made me like grow up way faster than my friends. And I learned like maybe if we have to go to like the store after practice, I'm gonna bring my book with me and I'm gonna read in the car and I'm gonna do these things ahead of time and so I can perform better. And I definitely have like slacked before and I'm like, wow, my grade reflects that. So like, this is what I'm gonna do differently. And like my freshman year, I was in band and student council and then I did indoor drama in the spring. And I thought I was busy then and I like, I, I got good grades. But now I'm even in more AP classes and I do like band, NHS, student council, UIL and all these like other clubs. And it, like, it just, it helps you really prepare um, for the years to come and then college of course. So. And I can tell you in like each individual class, geometry there's no homework. In biology and uh -huh. English, like unless you don't finish your work in the class, there's no homework. Like, this year. This year, at least with this year, there is no homework unless you finish your work in the class. Never and I will tell you, <laughs> <laughs> With all the love I have for you, so when you've got a kid who isn't motivated, who has, I love you so much, who has cruised through and comes home, I don't have any homework and everything. Really? How is that possible that you have absolutely no homework ever? And yet, he cracks open this book and he says, oh yeah, I have a key issue to do. This class was the one he wanted to read for. Now, I, I can't speak for all of his other classes, but that's crazy to me, because I know this kid. And yeah, he was fast paced, he gets most of his work done in class, um, but to do the added work at home, to make the time with all the other stuff he'd much rather do, even the practice and band that you're there forever and you're right. exhausted, you'd much rather be there than you know do homework typically, and yet he'd still read his key issues when I couldn't get him to do anything else. I was really impressed by that. And no, maybe he didn't do it all the time, but it is, it, it is an impossible. And sometimes your kids will do fantastic at it, sometimes they won't, and they'll balance that out. And that's a powerful, powerful lesson. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> He's very fast at everything. Other questions, go ahead. Are the <clears throat> minimum of a three or whatever they need to get received, the college credit, how does this apply further down the road? How can they use this further down the road? It's for like the seniors and the, and the older kids. How do you use this? How is this going to benefit my son? Well, for college, um, depending on what you want to do, majoring or stuff, um, if you have basics, if you get a specific like number of score that the college wants, like for example, if they accept a three or maybe a four or five, it can help them get that basic out of the way and then do another class. So basically, it's kind of like um, doing that credit so you can do something else in college. Okay. Right. So it's depending on where they want to go or what they want to do. That's actually a really good point that I said on the tell because most of my kids are STEM kids, which is science, technology, engineering, math. Um, so if you really do want to get into science, technology, engineering, math, by like getting the credit for the class I'm offering, you can get into those classes in college quicker. You don't have to take a social studies class. So that's kind of what you're getting at. Yeah, that's what you're getting at. That's, uh, that's a functional thing. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping someone will talk about just general world knowledge and things like that. A little, a little bit. See if they can come up with something. <laughs> Be more aware of what's around you. And to add what she said, like this could also this also applies to dual credit, is that once you get enough credits for college, you don't have to go to college for that long. Like my own cousin, she's like she graduated like two years ago and she's already a junior. I think. She will graduate. Yeah, she'll only she'll only need to do two years to get her um, undergraduate thing at school because she did all her AP and junior Yeah, and so she's ready to start into law school when most people are still. Class, especially history, they were taking because up to now, like your kids are like Texas history, like U.S. history. Who wants to learn about Texas? But now, like you get to learn about the world, and I think it's really just interesting, and it helps you like 
to do better in your classes, like if you choose to do like AP or more pre AP or dual credit classes down the road, um, it prepares you like for the rigor. And I don't know what she said about like learning about the world. Like, just we watched a video like a few months ago or something. It was about like not really a border dispute, but like kind of like it was about a hit, um the Dominican Dominican Republic and like Haiti or something. And it talked about like because of the because of a border, like everything was like changed. Like it was was it the Dominican Republic was more like Haiti, Haiti, oh, okay. but like yeah. like so like they both share a market, but that like. The Haitians couldn't go like cross the border like in time, because the border guards like just like kept them there for no apparent reason. So then the Dominican Republicans like could like set up their like spots quicker and have better spots. So even when you think like it's just one island, like they should have like equal opportunity and like that's what it's supposed to do. They like the Haitians don't have that much of an opportunity to have those better spots, and I didn't know that. And so this class has actually taught me a lot about the world that I live in, and it's just, it's a really great class. Dying to see if you can tell me why. Do you remember the, one was a French colony, yeah. one was a British colony. Or no, a Spanish colony. One was a French colony, one was a Spanish colony. So the French and the Spanish treated things differently. Do you remember this? Yeah. And so as a result, you have these two people on the same island that are living entirely different lives. Haiti is entirely impoverished. Um, the, the, the highest rate of AIDS in the Western Hemisphere, all sorts of problems. And the Dominican Republic is, you know, booming. Yet, they got this shared border right down the middle of the island. Why? I don't know if you remember, it's kind of, a, it's not really a neo-colonial uh, colonialism, but it ties back to, to colonial empires. And so the, the people are very different. So therefore, they don't like each other, which is weird because we would look at it and say, "Ah, oh, they live on the same island, you know, whatever." Very different. So, I don't know. I, now I'm getting into curriculum. Never mind. I shouldn't have done. It. <laughs> just, he remembers the market part, but there was kind of some background behind it as well. Maybe you didn't remember that part, but that's okay. You probably do remember it. I remember it now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It was a couple of months ago. About the difficulty of the class or the content. You've spoken obviously about that. What specifically would you say, and maybe to the students, is uh, the most difficult or, or uh, part of the class, or what you would, maybe something that you wish you knew going into the class that you would be, would have liked to have known that you could have been more prepared for? For me, at least it would be time management. Like, I did not realize coming into that I needed to allot this time to study, like, <laughs> It was like the first test or whatever, and I got it got late tonight, and I was like, "Oh, I have this key issue I have to read," and it's like now I'm tired and I want to go to bed, but I need to do this key issue, and so I read it like late at night, not remembering much, and it didn't help with my quiz grades that I already weren't doing well on. So like I had to remember like the next day, it's like, "Oh, you waited until last minute to do that yesterday and didn't do a good." Uh, didn't get a good grade on your quiz this today. Let's try to get this as soon as you get home so you can remember it and maybe read it a second time so you can fully get it in your brain and do better. I didn't realize that going in is that I need to a lot time for the things I needed to do. I heard a hidden question in there, which is what do I need to tell my child that they need to be ready to do? <laughs> It, whether it be no, or the, in her case, it's time management, but it could even be, for instance, I made y'all, I didn't make you do this. <laughs> I don't know who made you do this, I can't remember. But I made them at the very beginning learn all the countries of the world. That is not relevant to the subject matter at all. But when we start talking about what happened when Yugoslavia split up into Croatia and Serbia and, and Bosnia, and we talk about what's going on in Nigeria and, and the Catalan people in Spain, it, it helps if you have a clue where these places are. So I'm just going to throw this out there, I don't know, because that could be a different thing. She's talking about like skills, and I may be talking base knowledge. Uh, I did have a parent who grabbed me like in July last year, and so I saw her up at the school, and she said something like, "What can my child do to get ready?" I'm like, "Well, it's too complex to get into the details of the curriculum. However, study all the countries of the world because it will be useful to know." 
because then when we start talking about, I'm sure, I'm sure there's an adult, you probably know the whole idea where Catalonia tried to declare independence like about a year and a half ago, right? And so this idea of devolution, which was on the test, <laughs> or maybe he doesn't know that, I don't know, did he, look, did he, give, me, did he give me a look, I missed it. Did I tell him to look? All right, anyways. So uh, there's a question on de this idea of devolution, which is de-evolution, basically the breaking down of a country. And so it makes it easier to kind of grasp that this is happening in Spain if you kind of know where Spain is, and you know where Portugal is, and you know it's in Europe, and, and you know it's also not in Africa, so and we'll, we'll, we'll learn, eventually they'll learn real quickly that the African countries, whenever you throw up the flag of something bad's going on, it's, the African numbers are always bad. And the, and the more developed countries are better. And so, but knowing what those countries are is useful. So, so when, I'm sorry. You can also, I mean, you're going to know that there's going to be homework in, in human geography. So when they say they don't have any homework, you know that there's something to do in human geography. There's always something to do that you can do in human geography. Always. <laughs> always. <laughs> something she, to do. She evolved from reading the chapter at night to whenever she was getting ready in the morning, he would say, watch these, or somebody told her to watch these videos. So whenever she was getting ready in the morning, she would watch the videos. And so there's all different tools that they'll be given to work with. If, because different people learn different ways. If you read it, you learn, if you hear it, she absorbs every which way. She'll want to watch it, hear it, read it. And so, and that's and that's part of I mean Tools. especially as a freshman that you're learning your learning style right and how to study because we don't teach kids how to study typically and so this is a class that actually allows you to figure out how you study but along with the stuff that your kid can do on their own it's an incredible opportunity to have them talk about it with you because that's something that doesn't happen nearly enough where we get to to know what's going on in our kids heads and so if they're excited about something, if they're learning about something, if they have questions about something, they can talk about it with you and share with you what they're learning and you get to learn from the class too. I've had it now two years in a row and I'm doing okay. I'm learning <laughs> stuff. And it's, it's just, it, it's a fascinating way to, you know, review what they are learned um, by getting you involved, well, involved as well. I mean, they always say if you can teach it, then it, it cements it in your brain and they'll be more prepared for the next day um, to talk about what you're, what they're learning and what they're reading and what they're seeing in class. What would you say makes the class difficult as far as, is it the, the, the volume of the content? Is it the projects? Is it um, testing and quizzes that are excessive or above average quantity of those? What would you say? I think for me, at least, it was the pace of the class. Like, the quizzes and, like, all the curriculum stuff, like, I could do that. But at the pace that it was, like, that we were going at, it was, like, almost, I wouldn't say almost impossible, but it was really difficult for me to keep up with it and to be able to, like, remember everything, like, for the test. And so, you just have to learn how to, like, be able to keep up with the whole class. And mine was like curriculum. I had to sit down and read vocab for a long time to get what it was talking about because some of the stuff it's like I did not understand the vocab of it and I was like, well, it's in this book and I must need to know it. It's highlighted in the book, so like I need to know the word because it might be on the quiz, might be on the test, and I'm either way just might need to know it because it might come up in class. And it was like, I didn't know this, or I didn't know this country, what was going on, so I would have to do additional research because I didn't know the stuff that was going on. Like, because the last geography class we had taken was sixth grade. Like, I didn't get the geography basics, and I was like, I don't know what this is. So it was just sitting, like, realizing that I didn't know it, and I needed to do more to know what was going on in the class on top of the speed because it's like, oh, you need to know this and this type of, this certain amount of time. There's something extraordinary that they just said that I don't know if y'all picked up on and this is gonna translate into whatever she said that was nice about me. I don't know if I'm really that great because I, I, I think I'm doing something good but it's actually not doing something and I'll clarify that. She said they have to figure it out. He said the pace, and I had to figure out how to manage the pace. 
I didn't know the vocabulary. I had to figure it out. I'm not going to hand your kids anything. I will develop what they do. So if they engage on their own, which I will insist that they do, and that's kind of where the pain is in the beginning, is the 20s, 30s, 40s on quizzes are like, but Mr. Hockaday didn't tell me this. You're right, I didn't. Now, if I can get you to be aggressive as a learner, this is really, I don't know if this may be the answer to your question, is that there will be some growth in ownership of, of uh, your own learning. And this is, uh, as teachers, we've heard, uh, I'm looking at my teachers around the room, so we've, we've heard this stuff before, and that is that it, you don't want to be the sage on the stage. I don't want to be the wise man up in the front of the classroom who knows everything. I know, not everything, but I know it pretty well. And I'll even tell you, they'll tell you that there's days they ask me questions like, I don't know, let's look it up. <laughs> um, and I'm cool with that. I don't need to be that person. However, I need to be, instead of the sage on the stage, the guide on the side. I need to coach, but they need to accomplish. They need to fight the battles. They need to struggle. And what happens is when they do it, then they become learners. And again, it's not about me. I mean, again, I appreciate the compliment earlier, but it's about them. And it's about what they do. And that is actually maybe the biggest thing. If you want to know what you need to do to come in here, you need to be ready to own what, whatever you do. And there will be moments that you will struggle because they haven't been asked to do that. I'm not even going to be critical of the junior high schools. They were 13 years old before they came in here. And we're asking them to act like 20 year olds because they offer this class of sophomores in college. So it's going to be a, a, a hard switch that they are going to have to be able to to want to learn, to want to figure it out. And ultimately, again, your kids were introduced to me only by name originally as these kids are kids like that. Now, they haven't been pushed yet and they haven't been tested yet on the, on the level that I'm gonna ask them to go, but they are going to be the ones who accomplish this. Now, the cool thing is when they start to buy into this, and again, there will be a little pain up front. I apologize, you'll curse my name and that's okay. Um, when they buy into it, then I can teach a lesson in class that says, now you figured this stuff out, let's now expand it into stuff. And again, I think even, I'll go back to your year, this will probably sound like something I've talked about over and over again. It's all about making connections. And so if I can get them to get the base idea of the material on their own, then I can say, now, how does that relate to something we've already learned? How does that relate to something you've seen on the news or that mom or dad talked about? And this is when we go home, we have a conversation about corn. It sounds kind of crazy, but it's kind of funny, but a parent sent me a letter. They've heard the story that a parent sent me a letter this year that said, like, we had a four-hour discussion about corn last night. I don't know, four, I'm probably exaggerating, but she said it was hours long about corn. And it was because corn ain't just corn. Corn gets into subsidies, which gets into the advantages that American companies have, or American farmers have over Mexican farmers, which translates into more Mexican rural farmers can't make a living, make a living, which translates into migration. I mean, it's all, why are they crawling across the border? Because they can't make a living over there because of subsidies. But yet, why do we eat corn? Well, that's bad nutritionally because you don't get enough, you get calories, but you don't get, I mean, we just blew it up into everything. But if they don't read the basics of the agricultural geography lesson up front that I'm going to quiz them on, that's going to say, prove to me that you at least read the basics and tried to figure some of it out, then we can't take it to that level. And these kids can do that. And truth be told, and I'll, I'll say something, this could sound negative, especially if this doesn't work and they try this and it ends up not being a positive thing. There are some students who struggle with that. And I don't think it says anything bad about those kids. It doesn't. It's just they're not there yet. Remember, we're asking 14-year-old kids to act like they're 20. Some of them are have the, uh, and you kind of alluded to this earlier, I'll, I'll say two words and see if this is kind of what you're talking about earlier. Some of them have the academic maturity and the drive. And those are the two things that are going to make them successful. And some of them don't have that yet. It doesn't mean they're not going to have it. You know, they, if, they, if this becomes a struggle, first of all, pre-AP is going to be a struggle for them, and other classes in high school are probably going to be a struggle for them too. But if they don't have it yet, they figure it out too. So, but I'm going to push those buttons and make them have to become more, I don't say become more mature, to demonstrate and develop the maturity. 
to demonstrate their drive and actually use that drive. So what do they need to, I mean, I'm going back to your original question was what do we need to, what do they need to almost kind of bring into the class or what do they need to be, do to be prepared? Um, they need to prepare, be prepared to push themselves on levels that they haven't done before. Not because it's, it's not just workload and it's not just curriculum, it's personal intellectual development. And I'm going to say something that's going to sound maybe horrible to people. I mean, I know I love you and you love me. We went to Texas A&M, gig them, right? Um, but I'm tired of sending the best students we have to Sam Houston and Texas A&M in Texas. Why don't we send kids to Stanford and MIT and Rice and places like that? We have extraordinary kids here. We do. And if we don't treat them like they're extraordinary, and that doesn't mean pat them on the back and go, you're so special. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about pushing them to levels that they haven't done so they... I'm going to use the words you said earlier, they can figure it out. I don't figure it out for them, and I don't think, and it, it gets dangerous too if you try to figure it out for them also, because then their mind goes, problems, Mr. Hockaday solves or mom solves. We need to figure out problems I solve because then that becomes powerful. I mean, you, most of y'all, I guess, are probably something other than just teachers in some form of profession. I mean, teachers are still too, some other form of profession. And what you probably have learned, because I was not always a teacher, is the people who got promotions were the people who weren't afraid to be risk takers and who are problem solvers. I'm giving them the opportunity to learn how to start moving on that pathway, to take a risk and to, to learn how to solve problems. Is it easy? No, but again, if it was easy, anybody would do it. Let's, uh, let's stop sending our best kids, again, I love a let's stop sending our best kids to a and Let's start sending our best kids to, to Stanford and to Rice and Harvard. I mean, why not? And I'm not saying they have to go, because I also, was it you I said this to the other day? We were, we were talking about what schools you're interested in. And I'm like, you don't have to accept Harvard because it's expensive. But, you know, get accepted and then go to Texas A&M because you can afford it. You know? <laughs> but my point is a choice. And, uh, of course, this is something I'll tell you. I, I tell my pre-AP kids this as well. So if you have any of the class, you'll hear this. Um, there are two things that ultimately are going to get you things you want in life. One of them is money. I'm not saying money makes the world go around, but we need money to do things. Right? If you, can, if you can have money, you can get things you want, or if you have the power to choose, you can get things you want too. And so what's going to get you the power to choose? Knowledge. And it also is probably going to get you money too, but it gets you both things. And so problem solving is the key to that, and uh, I'm probably repeating myself. <laughs> so the idea is they need to prepare to uh, fight that battle and to not be afraid of failure. Failure is your friend. Because failure show. Actually, I'll say one more thing and I'll show. Um, another thing that I've said to them more than once is uh, I do not need to find out what your kids know. I need to expose what they don't know. I, need, I don't need to find out what they're good at. I need to expose what they're not good at. This isn't show and tell. That was kindergarten. And so I'm going to ask them to, I use my preacher's words, but to get out of their comfort zone. And I, I think that that's actually when they really blossom. Unfortunately, blossoming sometimes, you know, there's some pain involved there too. But it's, uh, growing pains are good because it means we're growing. All right, so more questions to them also. They don't pass the test. Can they take it again? And the answer was yes, the next year. So it's not... It's not a pass or fail, if anybody thinks in black and white, you know, cut dry. It's not a pass or fail thing. It's, they're learning. They're learning a lot. They're learning a lot more than I would have ever thought they would. And as an educator, that's, and a parent, that's what you want for your kids more than you know, anything. If you're gonna spend the time and the effort and the, you know, energy and the money to put them through any school, elementary through high school. You want them to be getting stuff out of it. You don't want them home doing busy work. You don't want to say, what's the point of this one? It doesn't even matter. And I feel like this, this the way he does it kind of, it's almost like a reverse classroom where you're, you're doing the prep beforehand so you're ready to really get to the meat when you get to class. Where often in class you're, you know, being taught things and then you have to go home and kind of you know, practice. This that's one reason why this class can take you to another level. Is does that make sense? I actually 
to be honest, I actually think like it becomes less than a class and more of like a sport or band. Because if you think about it, okay. Because if you think about it, you go home and you practice your music or you practice your sport, whatever it is, and then you come back the next day and you're ready to like to practice even more and to like to be able to implement of what you learned like the night before. So and then like it's just, like save like save like a couple more couple <laughs> well, my daughter gets out of dance either at 6.15 or 6.30, so yeah. So, and the AP test is like the final meet or like the final competition or whatever. And you just keep practicing and like this is one of those classes like you just have to keep working at it in order like to not just like find your like little niche and it's like, okay, I'm like, I'm, I like it where I am. I'm just going to stay like here in this comfortable spot. You. This is one of those classes where like you have to force yourself to like to move even farther than where you like ever thought you were gonna go. And this class really pushes yourself. And I think for some of the students they're really not pushing themselves. They actually find some of the topics interesting and so they delve more on their own. Is he in trouble or is he not in trouble? <laughs> so my wife goes to get her fast, but uh, yeah, I do have to pick her up at 630. But she's at the at the Methodist Church in Waller doing a dance class, so it's five minutes. So we do need to probably start wrapping up. So I'm gonna throw a couple first of all, I wanna thank everyone who volunteered again. This is almost like the, the Saturday thing. And you're not even getting pizza. So <laughs> they they I went to these people and said, Hey, I got parents who I know are probably concerned, worried, uh, anxious, maybe is probably even the better word, and I am begging them to come. Thank you for coming. There's, again, probably not, there's some are changing already. They told me they're changing. But I was hoping that more would show up, and that's good. I'm glad you're here, so I'm going to chase the other ones down now. Um, but these people took their time, their free time to come here, um, which I think it says a lot about what Waller High School is becoming. Um, and not that we weren't good before, but you know, again, you want to be ordinary, you want to just be good, or you want to be outstanding. And so, and I really, I don't know who knows Mr. Johnson, but a lot of this is being driven by the culture Mr. Johnson's putting in place here and, and throughout the district. And so, uh, he's creating something that allows people like Ms. Hyatt and myself and yourself and you know, everyone else who's involved to really say, let's be extraordinary and let's not be afraid of it. And so, uh, the, the, the opportunities here and these people are evidence of that. Um, and for the record, I cherry picked, which basically not cherry picked, I always say, but I, I asked people. I could have asked five of the parents, I could have asked 30 of the kids, and they would have been here. In fact, some kids were almost offended. Why are you asking me to come? It's not fair. I'm asking you to take time off for a second. Okay. A couple things. One, if you want to make the change, which I, I hope you've at least considered, and I recommend that you do that. Uh, I really do. Um, if you want to make the change, two things can happen. Um, I did send your children home. Are you leaving? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You know, you're amazing. You know that already. <laughs> She's extraordinary. Our, uh, our AP chemistry teacher, which is the coolest class on the planet, or uh, even more than mine. Second coolest. Uh, huh? Second? Okay, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> so, no, it's it's really an awesome. That's a, and that I don't know. I've never been in her class, but I, I took AP chemistry as a kid, and that was the coolest class ever. So um, I gave your kids this on uh, Friday of last week, I think. Um, it is a schedule change form. They would have to go in. It has to be signed by their parents. Um, if you want to make the change, you would fill this out and have them take it to their counselor. Or if you're so convinced now, um, you can fill it out now. And I, I can take it to the counselor tomorrow morning. Our counselors at the high school, they'll make the change as well. So I have the forms here. First of all, they already have the form. But if you're like, it, hopefully you've gotten the idea that this is this is really a great opportunity. And uh, if you think so, then I've got this and you can fill it out right now and I'll take it down there for you tomorrow morning. Okay? That's, I, I think I'm done unless you have other questions, but I'm kind of nervous now. <laughs> it's actually not so much, I, I guess I'm nervous about being in trouble with my wife. Is, uh, <laughs> but more so because I don't want my child.